Okay, we're going to solve and render an integral notation again, and this time we have a fraction. Okay, we have a fraction with an inequality symbol less than or equal to zero. So again, whenever you have an inequality like this where you have a, either a rational expression or if you have a quadratic one or with higher powers with inequality, there's a special process for doing that. We have two different ways of doing that, either by the table method or number line. You can pick either method, whatever one is easiest for you, but I'll show both methods so that way uh, you can just choose whatever one you, you feel is easiest. Let's start with the table method. Table method means that we have to figure out uh, the numbers that we're going to put on our columns. So first, what we need to do is we're gonna, we need to figure out what makes each of these parts equal to zero. We're going to look at both the top and bottom of that. So uh, we have x is 2, negative 1, and 4. These are the numbers that make either the top or bottom zero. So it doesn't matter if it makes the top zero or bottom zero. You're going to include all that. Okay. This tells us uh, what numbers that we're going to put on our table. And also these would be the same numbers that we would put on our number line if we chose to do that method. Let's do the table method first. Okay, so table method, we need to put any, any factor that you see here, top or bottom, we're going to first start by putting all those on my table. I have x minus 2, x plus 1, and x minus 4. I have all three of them on here. Okay. So here's the first column. I've got those numbers right there. Next, I'm going to put these numbers on the table. So I need three lines drawn here because there's three numbers that I have there. We're always going to make one more column more than the number numbers that are here. So this is going to be negative 1, 2, and 4. I'm putting them in order from smallest to largest. But notice I create one more column beyond the last number. And that's always what you do with the table method. So now here is my completed table. I need to pick test numbers in between each of these regions. A number less than negative 1, a number in between negative 1 and 2, a number between 2 and 4, a number greater than 4. I want to pick numbers for, I'll have four test numbers I'll be using on this one. So less than negative 1, I'm going to test negative 2. In between negative 1 and 2, I'm going to use 0. Between 2 and 4, it's 3. A number greater than 4, 5. These are test numbers that I have, and these test numbers will go into what I have over here on the left-hand side. I'm indicating only whether I get a positive number or a negative number. Negative 2 goes into the first one. Negative 2 minus 2 gives you a negative. Negative 2 plus 1, negative. Negative 2 minus 4. Negative. I get negatives for all those. Next, I'm putting in 0. 0 goes into all three of these. 0 minus 2, negative. 0 plus 1, positive. 0 minus 4, negative. Next, I'm going to test 3. 3 into all these. 3 minus 2 is a positive number. 3 plus 1, positive number. 3 minus 4, negative number. Now I'll test 5. 5 minus 2, positive. 5 plus 1, positive. 5 minus 4, positive. Now that I have the table complete with the pluses and minuses, I need to multiply down, so multiply each column together. So these columns, right, these three are here. Negative times a negative is a positive, and then positive times negative gives you a negative. This one, negative and negative, gives you a positive, and you have a plus there, so when I multiply that, I get a plus. This one, these first two will make a positive number, times negative, give you negative. All three positives, that means you get a plus uh, for your final answer, so your final sign configuration will be this one, negative, positive, negative, positive. We look at the original problem the way it was written. We're looking for less than or equal to zero. We're looking for numbers that are either negative or equal to zero because now we can actually we can include the, the endpoints now because of the equal sign underneath. So I need to write the, the answer in, in interval notation for this one. I have the negative regions are these two. So I have from negative infinity to negative one. Be careful you don't accidentally use your test number. It's not that. It's negative infinity to negative one. And then from 2 to 4, that's your other region. So I'm going to write my answer up here. 
Negative infinity. I'm just describing the regions that have negative signs in them only. Negative infinity to negative one. Okay, and then I, I can use bracket on this because of the equal sign. And then I also have from two to four. Now, the answer that I put up here is actually incorrect. Okay, and I'll give you a second if you can see what part of this is going to be uh, incorrect. So, negative, so this has a parenthesis on it, but the other ones have brackets on it. So the question is, what part is wrong about this one? Okay, well, the, the one that's wrong is this right here. If I include 4, that means that I'm going to be dividing by 0. I'm not allowed to divide by 0. So therefore, it doesn't matter that we have an equal sign there. If the number makes the bottom equal to 0, no matter what symbol is here, this one always has to be a parenthesis. So again, I'll, I'll repeat that. Whatever number makes the bottom 0, you're always going to have to put a parenthesis on that no matter what. Regardless of what sign that we have here, this is always going to be a parenthesis. You're not going to use a bracket on it. Again, parenthesis is the one that you want to have on there. We're not including the 4 because, again, it makes the bottom 0. So that's the only time you have to pay uh, close attention is when that happens there, when you've got the, the last number makes the bottom one zero. So be careful for that if you have a rational or a, a fraction expression like this one. Okay, so this is going to be your answer. If you were to do it by number line method, the only difference that you would have here is you would first put down the negative one, the two, and the four. You'd have your number line with these same numbers that we found earlier in order from smallest to largest. That's important, smallest to largest. You want to pick test numbers. Negative, uh, I'll use negative 2. I'll use for this one, again, you can use 0 in between the negative and positive. 0 is always a good one to try. 3 is in between 2 and 4. And then you can also try uh, 5. So, same test numbers we had before. When you test them, you'll put them in the whole entire expression all at once. So, when you, when you do negative 2, you have negative 2 minus 2. I have negative 2 plus 1, and I have negative 2 minus 4. Now, I could work all this out and get a numerical answer, but I'll show you a way that makes this easier. All I'm going to be concerned about is the signs that I have on each one. Negative minus a negative, that's, I'll get a negative for the first parenthesis. I'm multiplying that by another negative because I get negative 2 plus 1, that's a negative number. On the bottom here, I get another number, negative number. So I get Two negatives on top, that's inside each of these parentheses, and then if I work that out, I also get a negative number on the bottom. Negative times negative is a positive, and then a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So I end up with a negative number as a result, so I'll put negative here for that first region. Then I'm going to test it at zero. This time I'm, I'm not actually going to write it out by put, putting the, the zero into all those top and bottom. You certainly could do that. If that helps to see visually what that is and work it all out and get a numerical answer, that's fine. You can go ahead and do that, but you don't have to. All we're concerned about is whether you get a plus or a minus. I'm going to put zero into each of these separately. If I put zero in here, zero minus two, that gives me a negative for the first parenthesis. I, I, I put in a zero here, zero plus one, that's positive. Zero minus four, negative. So notice what I did there. I just All I did was I... I calculated each part out separately and just wrote whether I got a plus or a minus as an answer. And I left my answer as that. And then you can, we see here that two negatives will give you a positive and you have another positive. So therefore you get a plus sign as a result. So plus is going to go right there between negative one and two because the, the test point I used was zero. Now I want to try three. Again, I'm only going to put in the signs only for that. So three, three minus two, positive number. And I have 3 plus 1, uh, that's positive there. So 3 minus 2 and 3 plus 1, both those positive. On the bottom, 3 minus 4 will give you a negative. So you get a positive number on top, negative on the bottom. You get a negative as a result, so therefore the next one's going to be a negative. Then the last one that you're going to do is we're testing 5. So if you put 5 in there, 5 minus 2 is positive. 5 plus 1, positive. On the bottom, 5 minus 4 that's positive as well. So you get a plus sign as a result. So therefore you get a plus in the end there. So you have negative, positive, negative, positive, the same sign configuration that you had before. 
by doing it with the table method. And again, you're still going to want to get your correct answer based off of your signs. This would be your answer for both methods. It's just a matter of, dis of display. Whether you're writing more out visually this way or if you're putting, plugging in numbers in separately, uh, that will get you the same exact sign configuration. So therefore, you need to have that sign configuration in order to get the correct uh, interval notation for your answer.